Yeah, Robert Jenrick. Okay. Ava has done something silly. Oh, great. I'm glad you teed that up. <laughs> um, all right, so this is a story out today that dozens of MPs, including more than 40 Tories, have written to the Prime Minister demanding extra funding for councils in England to avoid big cuts to services. Now, obviously, we know that councils around the country are struggling at the moment. Several councils, including Nottingham, have just um, declared themselves approaching bankruptcy. Um, that Croydon as well, bankrupt, a few others around the country. Now... One of these Tory MPs is none other than Robert Jenrick, who you might know from the Star Chamber <laughs> and other listeners might know from, he's not actually in the Star Chamber, and other listeners might know as writing one of the amendments, the controversial amendments that several MPs uh, were going to vote for that could have sunk Rishi Sunak's Rwanda bill. When he was community secretary for quite a number of years, he was in control of the council budgets. So I don't quite understand why he didn't do something about it then. I'm just going to give you a few examples of times that he was asked to do something about it. So just play the first clip. I think one would have to proceed with caution before starting to uh, ring fence the funding for specific purposes, because I don't think that is what local councils themselves would wish. Uh, but we will consider whether we can give further guidance to councils as to uh, the areas of COVID-related expenditure, which we would expect central government uh, to fund. I think most councils would know that. Uh, in broad terms, they are the cost of social care, most obviously, uh, and that will be the largest cost. The uh, extra cost for housing to support rough sleepers, and there's been, as you know, a fantastic effort by councils to bring 90% or so of rough sleepers off the streets into uh, safer accommodation in hotels, and that does carry a cost. There's additional costs being borne by uh, the education functions within councils to protect uh, vulnerable children, for example, and we're working very closely with the Department for Education there. Um, and then there are some other costs being borne uh, elsewhere, uh, for example, in fire and rescue services, which you've seen have been accounted for uh, in specific grants to them. And, and then there are other functions as well. Uh, but there are things which councils are doing, uh, which is entirely of their own uh, volition. As I say, I support, I support councils uh, making those decisions. But as you can imagine, it, it is only fair that central government supports things which are open to all, uh, rather than individual choices by local councils. And if any um, council yeah. uh, leader or officer is watching these proceedings and is uncertain, then, as I always say, I would strongly encourage them to contact uh, MHCLG. All councils right. have regular contacts with the department mm -hmm. and discuss any of those issues. We wouldn't want right. anyone to labour under a false impression that uh, what they were doing is uh, guaranteed to be funded by uh, central government. So that's there in May 2020. So we're right in the heat of the pandemic, right at the beginning. He was indeed community secretary. He was in charge of the budgets. He told a select committee that councils will not be reimbursed for COVID costs. Now, at the time, councils were facing a funding shortfall of £3.5 billion. They were forced to make up to 20% cuts in funding. That means that provisions for adult social care, provisions for education, parks, bin collection, a lot of it had to halt because he would not plug the gap made by COVID. Should I play the next clip? Yeah. Mm. I've tried to be very clear throughout that I made this decision entirely on the merits. I believe it was the right decision to approve the application. Uh, we can discuss that in greater detail if you wish, but it's set out in the decision letter and it's set out in more detail in the letter that I sent to you. I believe that there is, and I, I stand by this, a generational challenge across the country, and in particular in London, to build more homes, homes of all types and tenures, including more affordable homes. And if we're going to do that, then it's right that we prioritise brownfield sites. And if we're going to build upwards, it's right to prioritise those parts of the capital and the country where there are existing clusters of high rise buildings. And so on the merits of this particular application, it seemed to me after a thorough decision making process that it was right to approve it. So that's uh, Robert Jenrick there talking in a select committee in June of 2020. So that's a month later. 
about how he had helped a developer avoid paying the council £45 million by expediting a £1 billion planning project. So that £45 million was a new levy that was introduced by the council so that if you were a big developer and you were, I guess, quote unquote, gentrifying an area, you would give money to the council to make sure that there were provisions for local people or there would be money that would go be fed back into the community. Robert Jenrick, as a minister, actively starved the council of £45 million. Mm. Now, the final one is just a letter that was written in August of 2019 by Hackney Council, and they were facing some of the biggest cuts in the country. They called on Robert Jenrick to increase the funding. I mean, like they, they were they were hemorrhaging money. Their funding had been reduced by £140 million in a decade. So on account for inflation, yeah, and just general shit getting more expensive going up, their funding was reduced mm. by £140 million. It meant that for every Hackney resident, £520 had been cut provision wise what did robert jenrick do tell us nothing Fuck. nothing dude this is very symptomatic of <clears throat> is the theory of politics popularized it's taking the nation by storm by our um, friend councillor tom jones it's hot dog politics in that in the um is it relates to the sketch from i think you should leave i would imagine every single one of our audience has seen i think you should leave given that they're all men under 30 mm. but the idea being <clears throat> A, car, a hot dog car crashes into a clothes shop looking around to see who did this and it's a man wearing a hot dog costume asking we've got to find out who did this mm -hmm. it's real like it's it's he's <laughs> he's guilty but like when i get to the bottom of who's ruined these councils <laughs> god they're in trouble <laughs> but equally it's, it's him standing for there's it suggests that generic's going to go for a leadership challenge at some point whether that's post sunak or, or post election pre-election lost a little weight we're talking on his about his glow up recently generic's looking good has to be said. Fair play mm. to him. Mm. And Haircut, new suit, the lot. But, but he, he can he can say all this and have absolutely no culpability for it. Mm. It's, quite, it's quite like he, he's allowed to say this and nothing will change, but he looks good for having said it. Mm. And he will not get, and because he's not in the government anymore, people won't be like, what the fuck, Robert? This is you, mm. brother. And because he wasn't a sec of state per se, he was only the minister responsible for the funding. <laughs> um, what could I have done? A lonely yeah. minister. I wasn't the hot dog, I was the bun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I got quite a bit of an eyebrow raise this morning because I said, Robert, I can imagine why certain factions, Star Chambers, would like to get behind Robert Jenrick because Suella Braverman has proved herself to be not capable of leading a faction. Did you listen to the speech she gave last week in the Commons about why we sh should vote against the Rwanda bill, why it needed to be tougher? Mm -hmm. Did you think it was any good? It wasn't compelling at all, no. There was mm -hmm. a couple of examples and that was it. It didn't fire you up? No, it didn't grab me. I don't <laughs> think it grabbed anyone in the chamber either, actually. And you were willing to be convinced. Yeah, I was I was just sitting there. <laughs> Preaching to the converted at that point. Listen, they've been giving you a bad time, Suala. <laughs> me, you, <laughs> I'm open to your ideas. I'm a listener. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm a listener, Home Secretary. Poor delivery. She also does make, she, she's proved to make incredible mistakes that have been seriously damaging to the conservative brand, such as saying homeless people should not have their tents. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've managed to damage the conservative brand right now. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah.